Okay, so I was um, I was wanting to look at this 19-year wave at different parts of history, um, and I'd I'd had a look at Vietnam um, a few months ago because Vietnam is actually seen as a 19-year war. So I thought, oh yeah, look at that. And at first glance, the Vietnam War looks to show the opposite of um, what I'm saying with this 19 year wave, you know, when it starts and ends and stuff like that. But when you look a bit deeper, you see that the major military campaigns did happen on down parts of the wave. But it, it, it looked so, although it sounds like a 19 year war, that that fits into a 19 year wave but then you realize there's stuff before there's stuff afterwards anyway so then i was thinking oh uh, you know what other part of history where should i go and i don't want to go too far back because there's not enough information and then if you go too recently there's kind of too much information and i thought what about the american civil war that that maybe is a good one and so I, I, so I just looked at, so I don't know an awful lot about it. I've seen a couple of films about it. So the American Civil War, uh, 1861 to 1865. So as it's a four year war, there'll be stuff before, there'll be stuff afterwards. And be interesting to see, you know, if it fits with this wave or not. Um, So also a point here that I've highlighted, the American Civil War is the largest and most destructive conflict in the Western world between the end of the Napoleonic Wars in 1815 and the onset of World War I in 1914. So there you go, is a good reason to choose this as an example. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the 19-year wave and its effect in history and in this episode we're going to look at the American Civil War. Right so we start off with some pre-war stuff 1849 September 17th an advocate for anti-slavery and women's rights Harriet Tubman and her brothers escape from slavery. Okay so this is a uh, before the Civil War, as you see on the wave there, it's above the zero point, going up. 1850, September. After years of confrontations between slave states and free states of the North, the Compromise of 1850 is passed. Next, next one now is a bit of a jump. So we've gone past the uh, high point of the 19-year wave. We're just starting to head down. 1856, May 24th. John Brown, an abolitionist advocate, along with other settlers, killed five settlers from the north in what is known as the Potawatomi Massacre. Similar episodes in Kansas like this continue before the Civil War. The sacking of Lawrence is an event that precedes the Civil War because Lawrence was initially established by settlers who opposed slavery. 800 Southerners who favoured slavery marched into the town of Lawrence to make a statement. Next one, 1857, March 4th. James Buchanan, former ambassador to the UK, becomes the 15th President of the US. March 6. The US Supreme Court decides a ruling that slaves are not protected by the US Constitution. The case is known as Dred Scott v. Sandford. 1858. The Lincoln-Douglas debates take place. The varying theme of the debates include the topic of the expansion of slavery across the country. So now we've crossed the zero point and we're heading down into minus territory. And I'll just add here that uh, I did notice about this stage that um, the, the actual year waves that you can see going up and down are slightly out. Uh, and if you can look at the end, if you can imagine, it should be stretched to the end. Uh, so something went wrong there. My fault. 
clearly. Anyway, it doesn't actually matter mainly because the main thing is the uh, is the big wave there, the big 19-year wave. 1859, December 2nd, abolition leader John Brown is hanged in Charlestown, West Virginia, for treason and murder. So that's in December, so that um, that should be before the crossing point there, and the line is uh, dead on the crossing point. So, yeah, but it doesn't really matter... And you know that the tip, the tip and the bottom of every wave will be September. Because these are Northern Hemisphere people. Next one. April 3rd, so still... No, so now we are in uh, 1860. Yeah, because that was December. So. 1860, April 3rd. The fastest way people received and sent letters was the Pony Express. The Express was instrumental in allowing the Union government to communicate with California prior to the start of the Civil War. Well, that's a long ride, isn't it? Still 1816, November 6th, Abraham Lincoln, a veteran of the Illinois militia, is elected as the 16th President of the United States. December 20th, because Abraham Lincoln is elected President, South Carolina convenes for a special convention and votes to secede from the Union. Secede. The United States slave population in 1860 numbered 3,950,174. 3 million are in southern slave states. So that's uh, about 3 and 4 in southern states. Uh, now into 1861, January, the southern states of Alabama, Arkansas, Florida, Georgia, Louisiana, Mississippi, North Carolina, Tennessee, Texas and Virginia joined South Carolina in seceding from the Union. These eventually form the Confederate States. February 4th, the Confederacy is formally formed. 1861, March 4th. Abraham Lincoln is inaugurated as the new President of the Union. March 11th, the Confederate Constitution is passed and elects Jefferson Davis as President. April, 6th, April 12th, 1861, the beginning of the American Civil War takes place at Fort Sumter in South Carolina. Confederate troops captured the fort, allowing Union troops to leave. Quite civil. 18, uh, April 19th, still 1861, in response to the capture of Fort Sumter, President Lincoln ordered the blockade of Confederate ports. General Winfield Scott called this the Anaconda Plan. May 21st, the Confederacy names Richmond, Virginia as their capital. July 21st, First Battle of Bull Run, a.k.a. First Battle of Manassas by the Confederates. It was the first land battle of major proportions in the Civil War. The battle took place near the city of Manassas in Prince William County, Virginia. There were more than 2,800 casualties at this battle. November. Lyrics to The Battle Hymn of the Republic is composed by Julia Ward Howe in Virginia during a review by Union General McClellan of the Troops. Next. 1862, March 8th. A naval battle pitting the Union and the Confederates, the Battle of Hampton Roads, take place near Seawalls Point, Virginia. The battle featured the ironclad battleships Monitor, and the Merrimack. March, July, Peninsula Campaign, the Union's first large-scale offensive in the Eastern Theatre, commanded by George B. McClellan. The operation involved 121,500 men, 15,000 horses, 1,150 wagons, 44 artillery batteries, and tons of supplies and equipment. So it's 1862, 
it's down in the depths of the wave, isn't it? You know, it's very interesting how it lands on these times. April 6th, Confederate and Union soldiers engage in fiercely fought battle in Tennessee, known as the Battle of Shiloh. It resulted as a victory for the Union. May 8th, the campaign through the Shenandoah Valley, led by Confederate Thomas Stonewall Jackson, known as the Battle of McDowell, resulted in a victory for the Confederate side. Still, 1862, June 25th, although outnumbered, the Confederate win the Seven Days Battle in Richmond, Virginia, 92,000 strong under Robert E. Lee of the Northern Virginia Army, best the Union, who had 104,100 soldiers. The Confederates sustained more casualties than the Union. August 17, bands of Sioux engaged the U.S. troops concurrent with the Civil War because of violations by the U.S. on treaties with the Indians leading to hardships. The Dakota War of 1862 take place. So, yeah, too right. They should have been annoyed. So, you know, depth of this wave. Oh, shit going on. Still 1862, August 28th, Second Battle of Bull Run. There were 62,000 Union soldiers when the battle started. 10,000 were killed and wounded. The Confederate had 50,000, out of whom 1,300 were killed and 7,000 wounded. September the 17th, Battle of Antietam. This battle was fought near Sharpsburg, Maryland, and the Antietam Creek. It is considered the bloodiest one-day battle of the Civil War. There were 23,000 casualties from both sides. September 22nd. In the hopes of ending the war, President Lincoln makes an announcement that he would emancipate all slaves. October 1862, Battle of Perryville. This battle took place in Chaplin Hills, which is west of Perryville, Kentucky. It has also been called as the Battle of Chaplin Hills. December 11th to 15th, Battle of Fredericksburg. Fought in Fredericksburg, Virginia, between the forces of General Robert E. Lee's North Virginia Confederate Army and Major General Ambrose E. Burnside's Union Army of the Pot Potomac. There were 12,653 casualties, with 1,284 killed on the Union side. The Confederate Army suffered 5,377 casualties, 608 killed. Still 1862, December 31st, fought in Middle Tennessee, the Battle of Stones River, is one of the major battles that had the most casualties from both sides. So we can see here we've just had an intense amount of things happening right smack bang in the depths of this 19 year wave. And if anyone thinks that I've just, you know, stuck it there, you can go back and check my videos. This wave, I sent it back right to year zero. Um, and, and 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 I've looked at historical events on these on these low points, and so many seem to to fit into these low points. 1863, January the first, using his war powers, an executive order is signed and issued by President Lincoln that freed 50,000 slaves right away. This is better known as the Emancipation Proclamation, as the Union advanced. More than three million more slaves were freed. March 3rd. There were difficulties in recruiting, which led to President Lincoln passing the Enrollment Act, requiring men between 20 to 45 years of age to be drafted. One could avoid service by finding a replacement or paying a fee. April, May 1863. Battle of Chancellorville. A major battle in the Civil War took place. It took place in Spotsylvania County, Virginia. 
Despite a Confederate victory, it was dampened by the loss of Lieutenant General Thomas J. Stonewall Jackson, General Lee's right-hand man. May, July, Siege of Vicksburg, Army of the Tennessee led by Ulysses S. Grant, drives Lieutenant General John Pemberton and his Confederate forces back to their defensive lines in Vicksburg, Virginia. Fought in and around the town of Gettysburg, Virginia, this battle had claimed the most number of casualties during the Civil War, an approximate total of 165,620 Americans fought at this battle over a three-day period. There were a total of 7,863 killed. September 19th, the last of the Confederates' win was the Battle of Chickamauga, fought in Georgia. General Braxton Bragg led the Confederates while the Union was under the command of General William Rosecrans. November 19th, 19, 1863, President Lincoln de de delivers a speech in the middle of the Civil War. It is one of the most rehearsed and remembered speeches in U.S. history, the Gettysburg Address. He delivers it at the Gettysburg National Cemetery. March 9, 1864, Ulysses Grant is appointed General-in-Chief of the North by President Lincoln. May 5th, Battle of Wilderness. The battle pitted Ulysses S. Grant and Robert E. Lee. This was literally a battle of wits, one general trying to outsmart the other. Casualty estimates reached 30,000 from both sides. May 10th, 1864. Battle of Spotsylvania, part of the Overland Campaign. The battle represented another example of the fierceness of civil war. Total, total casualties numbered at 32,000 again. General Lee had the upper hand during the skirmishes. June 20th. Under Ulysses S. Grant, Union forces engaged in a nine-month trench warfare known as the Siege of Petersburg. This took place in Petersburg, Virginia. General Robert E. Lee eventually yielded when supplies for his troops were cut by the Union using a 30-mile stretch of trenches. The siege ended in April 1965. November the 8th, Abraham R Lincoln is re-elected. November the 15th, Major General William Tecumseh Sherman leads the Savannah Campaign in Georgia. This campaign is said to have defied military principles for the reason that Sherman was able to inflict physical and psychological damage, incapacitating the area's capacity to fight back. They occupy Savannah, Georgia by December the 21st. I'm not sure what side he's on. I'm imagining he's a Confederate. January 31st, 1865. The United States Congress abolishes slavery by passing the 13th Amendment. February 6th. General Robert E. Lee is named as General-in-Chief of the Confederate Army. March, April. A, po a Pomatox campaign, described as an array of battles in Virginia, that were fought between the end of March 1865 and early April 1865. It is seen as the campaign that led to the eventual surrender of the Army of the Nor Northern Virginia and thus leading to the end of the Civil War. April 9th, 19, 1865. General Lee of the Confederates surrendered to General Grant of the Union at a, a Pamatax courthouse in Virginia, thus ending the Civil War. April 14th, Abraham Lincoln is assassinated by actor John Wilkes Booth at Ford's Theatre. April 15th, Andrew, Andrew Johnson is inaugurated as president. April 26th, John Wilkes Booth is found and gunned down in a tobacco barn. May 9th, President Johnson officially ended the American Civil War. May 10th, the Union capture of Confederate President Jefferson Davis in Erinsville, Georgia, is taken prisoner. May 9th, President Johnson officially ended the American Civil War. 
May 10th, the Union capture Confederate President Jefferson Davis in Irwinsville, Georgia, and is taken prisoner. I've done that. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Repeat. May 26th, General Edmund Kirby Smith, commander of the Trans Mississippi Mississippi Department, is given the terms of surrender by Confederation. He accepts the terms on June the 2nd, which officially ends Confederate resistance. June 30th, eight conspirators related to the assassination of President Lincoln stand trial. Four of them executed by hanging for their role in the conspiracy. Those hanged were George Atzerod, David Herald, Lewis Powell and Mary Surratt. Okay, that's it. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.